Yo, that's nice. Which one you like better? <laughs> Left? <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install aftermarket speakers in your car. Now, in my last video, I showed you guys how to install an aftermarket head unit, and it went from an OEM, you know, regular single DIN with a CD player, to an aftermarket single DIN with a CD player built in. So if we come to the inside of the car, we can see that we've got our single DIN installed, and the audio works. And this is hooked up right now to the OEM speakers in the car. And not only did just installing an aftermarket head unit increase and make the audio better, but we're going to go ahead now and go one step further and install new speakers in the door pods. So we're going to be replacing the speakers that are inside the door with better Kenwood ones. So today we're going to be working on the driver's side of the car, and we've got our speaker down in the bottom with a tweeter up top. Now the tweeter up in here is a very small speaker that outputs the highs on the car. We come down here, we're gonna have another speaker and it's larger than the tweeter, and this is gonna be taking care of our mids. Now in a proper sound system, we're gonna have the speaker, a mid, and a subwoofer to take care of our lows. But because we only have one speaker and one tweeter in the car, if you really wanna make the sound quality a lot better, if you install new speakers down there in the doors, you're gonna get much better audio, and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So, the first thing that we need to do is remove the door panel to get access to all the wiring and everything else behind it. So before you get started, make sure that the window is all the way down, and that's going to make sure that you're not going to have any clearance issues when we install the speaker down there. So to remove the handle, you're going to need to get a flathead screwdriver and basically pry out this little piece. You're going to have to pry it off now both at the bottom and at the top, and it's going to be able to expose the two bolts that are actually found behind there. With the outer part of the handle removed, you've got the bottom and the top screws that are both exposed. Grab a Phillips head screwdriver and remove both of the screws and set them aside. The next step is going to be removing the hand crank from the door. Now this is actually going to be very simple, but I struggled on this part only because I didn't know how to remove it. So the first thing you have to do is push back the little clip that's on the back side of the handle, push it outwards, and then once that's done, there's going to be a little clip that you have to push on the opposite direction of the handle. So if the handle is angled to the right, you're going to have to push the little clip to the left. Now it's just a matter of pulling the handle off the door. You're then going to have to remove one Phillips head screw on the side of the door. And then on the bottom of the door panel, you're going to have three Torx screws that you're going to need to remove. Take each one of those out, set it aside, and then the door panel is going to be free from the door frame. Last but not least, you're going to have to remove the little side reflector on the door that's connected to a wire. If you remove the outer lens, there's not going to be anything else that's securing the door panel onto the car. So from the bottom of the door, you're going to want to pull on it, and it's going to unhook the little clips that are holding the door panel onto the door frame. At that point, just grab the door panel, swing the bottom out, and lift it up so it comes off the door. Now at this point, don't yank the door panel off the actual door, because you've still got a couple connectors on the inside. So if you have any electrical wires or the mechanical cables back here, make sure that you take those off beforehand because otherwise the door panel is still going to be attached to the door frame. We were able to disconnect all the connectors for the trunk and uh, gas cover release, the one for the light, and the other one for the lock and unlock switch. Now what weren't you able to take out? Why is that still connected? Uh, the handle lever. So the actual thing that unlocks the door, it's a so uh, steel cable that's actually attached to the door. So we're gonna actually move this, set it aside, and even if we just set it like that, we're gonna have enough room to work in the actual speaker part up front. So if we take a look at this speaker that we currently have installed on the car, we've got the connector up top, and it's actually held in by a couple rivets that are surrounding the speaker. We've got four of them, one on each end, and we're gonna have to take each one of those out in order to remove the old speaker and install the new one. The new speaker that we have is a Kenwood speaker, and if you take a look at the side profile of it, you turn it, we can see that our adapter and the speaker are essentially the same size as the OEM one. So it's actually gonna be very easy to install this because it's not gonna be interfering with anything else. And if you also take note, the window is rolled down, and I'll show you why that's important once I remove the speaker. So to remove it, we're gonna have to drill out each one of those rivets that are on here, and then at the top of the speaker, we're gonna have to disconnect the wiring harness that goes to it. So step one is gonna be removing the wires. Luca, go for it. There you go, set that aside. And now we've got to take care of those rivets. 
So the easiest way to take care of all these rivets that are surrounding the speaker is getting a large drill bit and drilling out the entire top so that the back side of the rivet will fall back into the window frame. And then at that point, with each one of those removed, you can go back there and take them out. And there you have it, that one rivet is taken care of. Now if you're gonna be reusing these speakers, I'd probably suggest going with a little simpler and you know, less destructive method, but if you're gonna be replacing it, it's not a big deal. The game plan is just take it out. Grab your drill and remove each one of the little rivets so that the speaker is gonna be free. So with the four rivets drilled out, you can then just grab the entire mounting assembly, speaker and all of it, and just take it out. Now, if you take a look behind here, you can see that that's the actual window. So that's why I said before that if you guys have a decent sized speaker or whatever that you're trying to install, do it with the window down because you'll be able to hit the window and see if it's gonna be in the way. Now with the new speaker, it's gonna be the same depth as the, uh, as the OEM one, so we're not gonna have any issues, but just keep that in mind when you guys are installing your new speakers. So push out the little rivets that are attached on the back side. Now if they're not coming out, you can use a drill just to shave off the little tiny bit of metal that's still sticking the back side of the rivet onto the door frame. Now to grab those little pieces of the rivet that were pushed back in there, if you want, you can roll the window back up just to give you a little bit more room down there to pick them up. It's gross back here. I don't that. Got it? That's two. One, two. I'm pretty sure one of them already fell on the floor, didn't it? Nope. Just kidding. <laughs> Unless there were five. <laughs> Three, four, okay, there we go. So now we've got to wire up the new speaker up to this old connector right here. So as you can tell on this car, I've got four wires that are leading to the speaker. You're gonna have two of them that are positive and two of them that are negative. Now you usually don't have four, you might have two, and then only at that point you're gonna have one positive and one negative. So if we look at this, you'll be able to tell that we've got two connectors on the speaker, positive and negative, or positive and negative. It doesn't really matter. It's uh, speakers are, they work in both directions. So um, you've got to wire up the two wires that were on the left together and the two wires that were on the right. So if we look at the car, what is that? The green and brown and the black wire up together and then the red and green and the white wire up together. Now if you can just remove the connector itself, you're gonna be in the clear, but the thing is, it might not be so easy. So for this car, I'm actually gonna to have to cut off all the wires down at the end to expose each one of the wires. So cut it, and then we're gonna have to take off a little bit of the, the, uh, the insulation that's on them. So see how you cut them very close to the connector? That's gonna give us a, like the most amount of wire possible when we're installing this. I'm gonna have to bring back some of the insulation that's on these wires to expose some of the copper. Now, if you guys haven't seen my DIY, the, uh, the tutorial, on how to wire things up together. I'll have a link for it in the description and I'll even have an annotation on the right. So you guys are gonna be able to know how to take care of all these electrical connectors and wire things up properly. So my little brother's gonna be taking back the sheathing on all four of these wires. See, that, see how it exposes them like that? So you're gonna wire up those two together and then you're gonna wire up the other two together. Now as you can tell right here, my little brother's just spinning these things, the little strands of copper so that everything's nice and clean. And he's gonna do the exact same thing for the other ones. You just want a decent amount of room to work with, so you know, cut whatever you find is necessary. Now we're gonna have to take care of these things afterwards with either electrical tape or shrink wrap, it doesn't really matter. But in the meantime, we're gonna wire up these two together and then those two together. Now before we wire this up, I'm gonna show you what I'm wiring. So if we take a look at the back of the speaker, this is gonna be the one that we're gonna be installing on the car and you've got your two connectors on the bottom. You can see that we've got a skinny end on the left and a fatter end on the right. And the actual speakers, they came with a little bit of wiring to make our lives a little bit easier. It came with two connectors that slide right on. So the speaker is a male and it came with female connectors. You slide them on just like that. And then if you look at the other end of the wiring harness, you can see that we've got our two connectors right here, a positive and negative or negative and positive. It doesn't really matter the order, just make sure that you wire each one of those independently from each other and that you wire them just like that. So you can see that the one is gonna be wired up with those and the other one's gonna be wired up with those two. So we've got our two wires on the left that are gonna be wired up to this one connector right here. So we're just gonna have it in line like that. 
and you're just going to twist the entire thing together. Now what that's going to do is it's going to twist all the wires over each other and you're going to get a nice even connection over the entire thing. Look, let's see. There you go, just like that. So at this point, because we still got the copper wires exposed, we're going to cover this in electrical tape just to make it so these connectors will last. And we're going to do the exact same thing for that side. So we've got our one connection on the left, all good. And on the right side, we need to do the same thing. Now it doesn't really matter if you hook up the wires like we did before when it's like that, or if you switch it up and uh, make sure the connection's like that. It doesn't really matter. There's not gonna be a difference in performance. It's just gonna be, you know, style or preference of wiring. It's all gonna do the exact same job. So, Luca's gonna go ahead, twist the wires over each other, and then seal it up with electrical tape, just like we did with the left side. So next up is gonna be mounting up the speakers up to the car. Now before we do that, we're gonna have to mount up this bracket only because the connections on the new speaker are different from the old speaker. So the new speaker itself is actually quite shallow. We don't really have any side that's really making it up. See that we've got just this little bracket thing right here and there's nothing behind it. On the new one, you can see how much more meat we have. So on the new one, we're gonna have to mount up this bracket here on the back side of it in order to make sure that everything mounts up properly. So once you hook up the adapter up to the car, there's going to be a screw and a washer on the back side of it that's going to be able to secure it in place and you're going to have to install one of these on each corner. If you remember before, there were rivets that were installed and we're going to have to replace those rivets with these. So once they're all in, go over them once more just to make sure they're tight and secured and then we're going to be installing the speaker. Now make sure that when you install the bracket on the car, you install it the right way. So it should actually say on the actual bracket which way it goes. So you can see that right there it says top and we're gonna have to feed those wires in there to make sure that we can connect the speaker properly and get power to it. So you should just feed it in there through that little hole and then those little connectors are gonna connect on the back side of the speaker. So if you remember we had the little, we had the short side, and the skinny side on the left and the fat one on the right. So just hook those up appropriately and then screw the speaker into the bracket. Luca, what are you doing? Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're just installing speakers. <laughs> so just tighten them all up. And then the speaker is going to be secured up to the bracket. Now at this point, everything should be good. So we're just going to move these wires and attach them to like the back side of the door just so that they don't interfere with the window. So we're going to tape them up there just with a little bit of electrical tape. The duct tape will work too. You just want to get it out of the way just so that you don't have any wires that are dangling on the back side of the speaker. Now the next step is completely optional. You can go ahead and install the speaker grill that goes over top of it. Now after you install this and you mount it up properly, you want to see if you have enough room inside the door panel to have this installed. Because you might be interfering with the back side of the door because that grill is still going to be installed. You're going to have three screws just like installing the speaker and that's going to be securing the mesh onto the speaker itself. Now before we install the door panel back on the door, the speaker install is completely done at this point. Now before you install the door back on the car, you want to see if the speaker works. And that's very important. It's going to suck if you install the speaker and the door panel just to find out that it's not working. So with it like this, go inside the car, put the key in the ignition, and then test out the audio system. And then when you turn it on, you should see the speaker working, and when you put a decent amount of volume into it, it should pound. And when you put your actual hand up to it, you're gonna actually be able to feel something on the speaker grill. So when the volume's up, you put your hand here. And you'll be able to feel the speaker moving. So, with that said and done, it's now time to reinstall the door panel back on the car. I like how this is a rainbow. Oh my god, Luca! And that, guys, is how you install aftermarket speakers. <laughs> Forgot where they were. Uh... <laughs> And that, guys, is how you install aftermarket speakers on your car. Now, you guys can replicate this exact same process for your rear speakers if you guys also have a kit. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be happy to help. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.
You're so cute. Yeah, you're actually just like made for the camera. Oh my god, camera loves you. Oh. <laughs> That was close. You almost killed your window. Yeah. Right, Luca, you, want a, you want a little quote right there? Uh, yeah, faster's not always better, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said talk. Oh, you said duck. I said talk. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Such a smooth talker. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, so after you have your speaker installed,